Super Smash Bros. Ultimate brings together a ton of different characters and franchises into one huge game. However, with all these different franchises and characters that need referencing, there's bound to be some things that are inaccurate or incorrect. Welcome to the second Smash Bros. Inaccuracy video. You all seem to like the first one, so I decided to make a sequel. Don't worry if you haven't seen the first part though, as you won't need to know anything there for this one. But yes, today we're going to be going over some of Smash Bros. inaccuracies. Now what counts as an inaccuracy? Well basically, it's simply when something is either a straight up lie, or is inaccurate to a character's origin. Now things like creative liberties won't be included here, such as specific character moves that weren't in the source material. Those were created for Smash to fit the character, which means they don't usually go against the character's origin, and are more just a different interpretation, so those won't be included. I guess it's easiest to see with an example of what I mean by an inaccuracy. On the Shadow Moses Island stage, if you quickly press down taunt with Snake against any character that was in Smash Bros. Brawl, then Snake will have a special codec about them. However, since these come straight from Brawl and are mostly unchanged, this leads to some of them being no longer accurate. When using Snake against Alf, they'll still refer to him as Olimar. You know, like even when Captain Olimar has lots of Pikmin with him, they could all be gone the next moment. This is because Alf was only added as a costume for Olimar in Smash 4, and since they don't check which alt you use, they'll just say Olimar. That's a pretty easy example of an inaccuracy, but if you still don't get it, I'm sure you'll get it later. Now I also wanted to start including some inconsistencies in these videos as well, so I could share a few more with you guys. These are basically when something is different from other things in Smash Ultimate like it, for no real reason. As an example for this, we have Alf again. Man, he just can't catch a break. In the tips menu, he's the only character to be shown as an alternate costume instead of his main one. This is really strange, as this is the only tip he's shown in, and it isn't even about the color. Even if it was about the character's color, characters like Mario that also have tips on different alternate costumes don't change. So it's very weird that Alf is in a different costume here, despite it just being about Alf and not even being about the costume. So this is an inconsistency, and almost certainly an error. Now that you all hopefully know what I'm talking about, one last thing to mention is that these small errors don't make Smash bad at all, and are just nitpicks for the purpose of being interesting. Too many people missed the point of the first video, thinking I was actually mad over these, or thinking that these are taking points away from Smash's score or whatever. No, these are just silly things that are just supposed to be facts to point out. If you think I hate Smash because of these, I don't. It's one of my favorite games ever made, and I'm really just looking for these to have fun. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe as that helped me a ton. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into some more inaccuracies with some added inconsistencies in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Let's start off with how we started off last time with another costume error. Quite a few of you guys in the comments pointed out that the gem on K. Rool's chest in his white alt appears a lot more gray on its render than it does in actual gameplay. This one is a bit harder to tell than the three costumes I mentioned last time, but the gems are definitely different colors. I assume this might be because they wanted the gem to match the cape like it does in gameplay, but maybe the original had it match the skin instead. I'm not sure what the reason is, but this adds K. Rool to the list of characters with inaccurate renders, with Ganon, Luigi, and Daisy. Let me know if there are any more like this, because I find these very interesting. Also, keep in mind, I'm not counting the renders looking nicer as inaccurate, because obviously they're supposed to look nice. I'm mostly just going on if the colors are different or if a detail is missing or added. Next up we have two from the comments which I'm going to trust are inaccurate. Obviously I researched these myself, but I haven't played the games these two are from, so take these with a slight grain of salt. First off, Shulk's Final Smash Chain Attack, according to the one and only Whale himself, has a few inaccuracies about it. First off, we see four characters here. However, in actuality, your party can only consist of three characters in Xenoblade Chronicles. Additionally, something I would have never noticed even if I did know what I was talking about, Riki here attacks first of the four characters in the Final Smash, despite Shulk being the one to call the attack, so he should be the first one to do so. This is because whoever calls the chain attack in the original game is also the first to attack. Our next comment one comes from Gumball Fan. Uh, I will oh, eliminate the middle class. He says that despite the Magicant stage being clearly based off Earthbound beginnings, it's labeled as being from Earthbound. Now, I was originally hesitant to include this one, as after doing my research, it seems that it's mostly from Earthbound Beginnings, however, a few elements did come from Earthbound. I did decide to include this, however, because it is labeled as being from Mother 1, when the game is set to Japanese, so this is at the very least an inconsistency between the two languages. 
Now again, like I said for those two, I'm not 100% sure about them, so if they do turn out to be incorrect, please let me know and I'll pin a comment saying if they are. Now I do have one more comment one from Davey, however, I actually play Breath of the Wild. So in Smash Ultimate, fire attacks will actually cause Link's bombs to activate without him needing to activate them himself. While this is pretty cool, it's not accurate to how these work in the game, with only being able to be detonated by Link himself or by another bomb. That actually leads to another inaccuracy I found, which is that the explosion from another Link's bomb doesn't activate a different remote bomb upon blowing up, if they're in range, like they do in Breath of the Wild. Look at that, two inaccuracies for the price of one. We already mentioned one of Snake's codec errors before, so let's go ahead and do one more along with the Palutena's guidance error. First off, let's go to the one with Snake's codec. In Bowser's codec call, they mention how Bowser is slow. Doesn't look that tough to me. Seems kind of slow, actually. Well, he is the king of Koopas. It's only natural he'd be slow. But that's only because he's the heaviest fighter here, by far. Them calling him slow, however, is kind of a stretch to say. While Bowser isn't particularly fast, he's better than average, being the 21st fastest character in the game. This makes him faster than Snake himself, who's actually tied for 59th fastest character in the game. Bowser also has one of the fastest initial dashes in the game, being 6th in that category, only being behind Mewtwo, Charizard, Sonic, Little Mac, and Zero Suit Samus in that order. This of course stems from Bowser being slower in Brawl, with him being a lot closer to the middle range of speed. Interestingly though, he was still faster than Snake during the majority of his dash, however he's the only character slower than Snake for initial dash speed, so maybe they're referring to that, I don't know. For Palutena's guidance, many of them were updated from Smash 4 to Ultimate, so it's a lot harder to find inconsistencies and inaccuracies with them. However, one thing they didn't change for Smash 4 is Me Gunners, where they mentioned them wearing a backpack. Wrong and wrong. That's a Me Gunner. All of them carry arm cannons and backpacks. That backpack looks heavy, but that's because it's filled with different types of ammunition. This is obviously an inaccurate set of statements, as me gunners don't wear backpacks anymore like they used to in Smash 4. They go on about it being heavy and such, which is all pretty funny knowing that there actually is nothing there. Which is what I would say, however it seems like they actually fixed this error in a patch. Yeah, when I went to get footage, I actually noticed that the line about backpacks was completely cut in a later patch, which I find pretty interesting. Wrong and wrong. That's a me gunner. Huh. I believe this is the only Palutena's guidance to be changed post-launch, so yeah, this one is actually no longer inaccurate, which is pretty cool. Good on you, Nintendo. One final thing relating to these two things is seen in the tips menu. You can see all of the character tips laid out for you, with a few extra near the bottom that relate to a character. Like how one of the home run bat tips is in the character tips selections menu, since it mentions Ness, while also still being an items tip. Similarly, the Palutena's Guidance tip is seen here for mentioning Pit. However, the codec calls aren't here, even though they do have a tip about them and that mentions Snake. So, this is a bit of an inconsistency. Speaking of the tip section, this is a goldmine of inaccuracy, so let's go through the rest of them that I found in that section of the menu. First off is my main man Mario. He has a tip that states, when you think of Mario, you might think of his signature phrases like Mamma Mia and It's a Me, Mario. These classic Mario phrases were first uttered by Mario in Super Mario 64. Now with my infinite knowledge of the Mario franchise, this one seemed a bit fishy, as while yes, Mario 64 was the first mainline game Mario was given a voice, I knew that the first game he was actually voiced in came earlier. Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, got his start as the voice actor for Mario on a game called Mario's Game Gallery, later re-released as Mario's Fundamentals. This was a game released on the PC, and one of Mario's many voice lines there was his iconic Mamma Mia. This game dropped before Super Mario 64, making this the first time Mario spoke his iconic catchphrase. He could have said it as well in the TV show, or maybe in an instruction manual at some point, but this was the first time the voice actor himself said the line, so saying it started in Super Mario 64 is inaccurate. Also, speaking of voice actors in the Mario series, did you know that Drybones, the best Mario character and gaming character, actually is a voice actor and isn't just sound effects? Pretty neat, right? Drybones for Smash. Next up, we have one for Mario's brother Luigi, where his states, Luigi's first big break as a main protagonist was in the 2001 release, Luigi's Mansion. This is, however, incorrect, as he was of course the main protagonist of the greatest Mario game ever created, Mario is Missing. If they meant the first game with his name in the title, which I mean they obviously didn't, but still, 
Then there was a game that was released even earlier than Mario was missing that I'd never heard of before called Luigi's Hammer Toss. It was a Game & Watch game and this was the highest quality video footage I could find. Safe to say this is definitely not a well remembered title or liked one. Link's next and they have a tip that references how Link's name isn't often in the title of Zelda games despite him being the main character. It states, despite being the hero, Link's name only appears in the title of five games. Can you name them? One might be trickier to remember than the others. The five games it's talking about are Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, A Link Between Worlds, and the hard one, Link's Crossbow Training for the Wii. This, however, is an incorrect count, as it doesn't include its iconic first outing on the CDI, Link the Faces of Evil. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they left that one out because they wanted to forget it. Same with the other two games I mentioned, actually. Nintendo might be pulling some sort of cover-up here or something. After those three tips, we still have three more, although these ones aren't about obscure games. One of Isabel's tips states, Isabel first appeared in Animal Crossing New Leaf in 2013. While in actuality, it released in November of 2012. However, there's a catch. It did release in 2013 elsewhere in the world, like North America, which would make this one technically accurate. However, then we have to consider that other games that have different release dates throughout the world say when and where they were released at that time. For example, Shulk says that his debut was in 2012 in North America, which is correct, as that's when his game dropped in that region. So while Isabel's is technically correct, it's inconsistent with how the characters handle trivia like this. Next up is Lucas, where one of his tips straight up lie to you. Lucas's second tip about his neutral special PK Freeze lies to you about activating the attack. As it says, hold down the button in a direction to extend the projectile's arc, but remember, the ice only bursts once you let go, so plan carefully. They claim the only way to activate it is by letting go of the button. However, it will just eventually run out on its own, so this tip is inaccurate. This was found by Connor on my Discord, so if you want to help out with maybe a future third video, then go check that out, because I usually ask for if anybody has any inaccuracies on my Discord before making these, so please make sure to check that out in the description below. Anyways, our last one for the tip menu is not relating to one fighter in particular, but the tip is about the top three heavyweights. While who they say is correct, what they say about being heavy isn't. It says, the heavier a fighter, the stronger their attacks, and the harder they are to launch. While the second part is true with them being harder to launch, them being stronger because of their weight is not. The strength of their attacks and how heavy they are are completely different statistics. Being heavy only affects how far you get launched and a few more minor things like how hard it is to push you, or how much you weigh down this platform. It does not, however, affect how strong an attack is. It's just very common that heavy characters are strong, but their weight has nothing to do with that. Well, I just mentioned the platform on the Mushroom Kingdom stage, so let's quickly go over some inaccurate things about the two Mushroom Kingdom stages in Smash Ultimate. The first one is based on the original Super Mario Bros. Despite this, the Piranha Plant appears red instead of the normal green color it usually is in the original Super Mario Bros. Also, small side note, they should totally add this platform to Mario Maker, as it's one of the very few things from Super Mario Bros. 1 not in Mario Maker 2 yet. Moving to the other Mushroom Kingdom stage, Mushroom Kingdom 2, the title is actually a lie. This stage and the game it's based on, Super Mario Bros. 2, don't actually take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, but instead the dreamland of Subcon. Oh shoot, I probably should have gave a spoiler warning before I told you that all of Super Mario Bros. 2 was all a dream. Sorry, I knew a lot of people were hyped for that game. I, I, I'm so sorry. Yeah, next time I'll try to give a spoiler warning. For our next segment, we have a few inconsistencies with the music. First off, Dragon Driftway and Ice Ice Outpost are the only two tracks that are from one Mario Kart game that don't have their name following the title of the track. All other courses from Mario Kart 8 have Mario Kart 8 in the title, even the Excite Bike one, which was originally DLC along with the other two I just mentioned. Again, this isn't an inaccuracy, obviously, but it's just inconsistent with the other songs in the menu. The other song here that doesn't have its title next to it is the Rainbow Road song, however that's from like three different Mario Kart games so that makes sense. Next up, two tracks from Dragon Quest come from Dragon Quest XI. However, instead of just stating the game of origin like almost every other track, it states the remake of its origin. So instead of just saying it's from Dragon Quest XI, it says it's from Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. 
I imagine this is because Square is very protective over its brands and only lets Smash use very specific things. Heck, they didn't even let Nintendo mention that Cloud is from the Final Fantasy series, only that it's from Final Fantasy VII, which is probably why it's the only franchise in the song menu that doesn't say series, so I guess that's another inconsistency right there. Both the Pac-Man series and Fatal Fury series contain music tracks from other series. For example, the Pac-Man series has tracks from Galaga and Mappy, while Fatal Fury has tracks from Metal Slug. This is of course because they're from third parties, however it doesn't stop it from being inaccurate to call these songs from the Fatal Fury or from the Pac-Man series. For our final music section one, I'm not actually sure if this should even count. There are three tracks in the game, Flat Zone 1, Flat Zone 2, and Picto Chat, that were originally created from sounds those games make for Smash. That's because they both have stages, but neither of their source material have songs. So my question is, should this here even say Game & Watch or Super Smash Bros. Melee? Usually what goes here is the game that the song originated from. For example, Jump Up Superstars says it's from Mario Odyssey. Now if you don't think it should say Melee or whatever Smash game they're from, then shouldn't it say that they're a remix? Like I said, this one is very debatable, so let me know what you all think about this one in the comments, if it's fine as it is, or it should be changed to one of the two things I said to fit in. As of now, I believe these are the only three songs in the game to not be called remixes, but also have composers listed under them, as usually only remixes get that treatment, so I guess you could at least say that these are inconsistent. For our final segment of the video, we have character voice line inaccuracies and inconsistencies. In one of P. Jiggle's useless Smash Fact videos, he noticed how Bayonetta's alt based off the first game had one more voice line in the menu than her default costume, which is this. Boom. However, both costumes are able to say this in the game, so this is obviously an error. So that got me wondering if there were any more like it, and sure enough, there was. Larry Koopa is the only Koopaling to only have 27 voice lines instead of 28 for some reason. Now I'm unsure if this is an error in the sound test menu and they just forgot to put one there, similar to Bayonetta, or if he just doesn't have another one for some reason. I can't really figure out which one he's missing as unlike Bayo, each Koopaling has a different voice. So either this is an error and he does actually have 28, or this is not only an inconsistency with the rest of the Koopalings, but all other characters with alts that change their voice, as he's the only one to have a different number from the main alt. Again, besides Bayonetta, who we already established, is an error. Next up, we have something somewhat similar with the announcer. For every character that changes gender, he has two voice lines for announcing their names for some reason. This includes the characters... Inkling! Inkling! Robin! Robin! Me Gunner! Me Gunner! Me Sword Fighter! Me Sword Fighter! Me Brawler! Me Brawler! We Fit Trainer! We Fit Trainer! Villager! Villager! Pokemon Trainer! Pokemon Trainer! The voice lines are clearly exactly the same, so it's certainly an error that he has two for each of these characters. However, something that makes this even weirder is that he doesn't have extra voice lines like these for Corrin or Byleth. Guess he's not thrilled those two made it into Smash either. I knew I liked him as our announcer. Duck Hunt's voice lines aren't sorted by the duck and the dog, but are instead just lumped together. This differs from other group characters like Banjo and Kazooie or the Ice Climbers, who label who's talking. This then makes Duck Hunt's voice line grouping system inconsistent, except for some reason Rosa. <sighs> Oh man, can't even say their name without getting sick. Uh, Cringe and Luma here, for some reason only label Luma's lines. Guess they didn't want to write out Cringe's name as much as they possibly could. Good on ya again, Nintendo. And finally, for our final inaccuracy, Jigglypuff's voice line for saying for some reason doesn't play out fully in the menu, but does in game. This is really strange, as I would think that it would play fully in the menu and maybe not in-game if anything, but it's really weird to see it the other way around. Maybe it combines multiple voice clips, but I couldn't really find one that sounded like the second half of the song, so this is very strange. But anyways, that's it for the squeakle to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Inaccuracies. Have any more for me for a possible part 3? Let me know in the comments, or in the Discord server which is linked in the description. I really enjoy making these fun fact videos like this, they always fascinate me so I'll be eager to do a part 3 if more facts and such show up. I had quite a few that I actually cut from this episode, so I'm saving them for the next one. 
If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe for more on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and anything Nintendo Switch. One thing I did want to address from the last episode, I said this. Players, in this example Bowser, dies about 2% earlier to an up smash from Byleth than on a normal Battlefield or Omega stage. Now, so many people thought I was making a mistake here calling him Byleth. Yeah guys, this was just a joke about how all Fire Emblem characters are the same. Like, I'm sure most of you guys thought this was a joke, but I got way too many comments thinking I actually made a mistake here. But yes, I obviously know this isn't Byleth, but instead Krom, it was just a joke, so yeah. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video, I had a great time making it, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye.